Anthony Romeo here again, Wise Up. Great episode ahead of us today. Just want to say thank you to all of you out there. Keep on listening. We appreciate you taking the time with all the mediums out there that you could be listening to. How to build a shed or what souffle to make or, you know, what do you do in a post-COVID apocalyptic world? You know, uh, understanding the needs or the solutions out there to support IT infrastructure, layer one infrastructure is sometimes not that exciting of a discussion. I, I can't argue, I've been in it for 20 years. I understand that it's, it's not that sexy. However, it's crucial and it's critical that you understand the quality products out there and that what we could offer as the layer one infrastructure goes into the office space, the data center, healthcare, education, financials, you name it, I guarantee you have a device that needs it. So with that being said, we are fortunate today to have Bob Allen with us from the Siemen Company. He is um, the global business development manager for the Siemen Company, and he's here with us again because last time he was kind enough to grace us and talk to us about Converge IT that the Siemen Company offers for their customers out there and works with their partnership relationships like Wise Components. So we greatly appreciate you guys tuning in again. But let me say guys and girls, I don't want to offend anybody and mean that sincerely. So though, um, you know, everybody now is forced to work remote, typically folks like myself and Bob, we would be going into the client, the contractor, be uh, consultant and educating them on what's the latest and greatest in industry trends to support their needs, whether it be for design or to build, to save cost and time. Now, with that said, the last time we had Bob on and he spoke about the digital platform and um, you know the capex savings uh, that are needed to. Um, be with the Siemens that, that are available with the Siemens company that offer for the layer one infrastructure. He went into great lengths and details on how to cover that, uh, talking about you know how it integration with all the different platforms that are out there. So today, um, Bob uh, is also going to talk to us about the post-COVID world, if you will, on how the office is going to get turned upside down a bit and how Folks like us that support and provide the layer one infrastructure are going to become even more important to your daily lives. And even in the home environment, because so many of us, like myself and Bob, we're coming to you today from the comforts of our own home office. So without further ado, Bob, welcome again. Thanks, Anthony. It's great to be back with you. Yeah, it's, it, it really is. Uh, it's been 11 episodes and and the uh, listeners keep on coming, so we're going to keep on talking. So uh, we're hoping everybody's enjoying the Wise Up platform, as uh, today we're going to be talking to uh, Bob about intelligent buildings and what's expected with these digital platforms. So Bob, uh, just to give us a, a brief overview of the Siemen company again, for those who uh, didn't tune in to uh, the last episode that you were on, Give them a, a brief understanding of where you're coming from as a manufacturer in the layer one infrastructure, and then give us a little um, taste of what you do as business development management for uh, the globe. For the Sounds company. good. Yeah, absolutely. So Seaman Company is a great company. Uh, we're a family-owned company since 1903, headquartered in Watertown, Connecticut. We're a global manufacturing firm that specializes in layer one infrastructure. So all of your category cable, everything on that passive infrastructure, cabinets, uh, patch panels, fiber, connectivity, a complete end-to-end -end solution. My specific role here is helping our customers understand the benefits of intelligent building construction, both from a capital cost savings perspective and an ongoing operational savings uh, perspective, and how the layer one infrastructure is leveraged to support that intelligent building environment. Oh, great. Thanks. And, and as um, your specific role, um, being that you cover the globe, 
uh, you're getting a lot less uh, frequent flyer miles now uh, with everything is, uh, you know, forced to do remotely. Um, what is it uh, in your daily day? What excites you? What gets you out of bed from a work standpoint to educate and enlighten the folks that don't know the semen company and from a intelligent building aspect. I have to say the best days for me are when I have the opportunity to speak directly with customers and help them understand that, yes, there's a lot of technology that's involved in an intelligent building, but in most cases, these are systems you're deploying anyway. I just hope I can help them think a little bit differently about how they design their buildings, about how they procure them and how they deploy them resulting in all the benefits that we talk about, capital cost savings. We're saving customers over $2 million per 100,000 square feet of construction. Uh, wow. Lower, I know, staggering numbers. Repeat that again. <laughs> you want to hear that again? Over $2 million per 100,000 square feet of construction. And wow. that's by leveraging intelligent building technology. We rely a lot on power over Ethernet, which is where the structure cabling comes in to support that. Uh, as well as analytics to provide ongoing operational savings and an improved, more productive occupant or employee experience within that building. Oh, that's great. That's terrific. Now, from your understanding, because you've been uh, trapped in your house for the last three months, uh, going into a new office building of the future, or the present, I should say, what do you anticipate seeing in, in the interaction between the devices and the network infrastructure and where does Siemen play into that mix? Sure. So I think we're going to see two different types of scenarios and I'm going to divide them into older legacy buildings and newer intelligent buildings. And I think in the older legacy buildings, we're going to see a lot of manual operation. We're going to see people at the front door with the temperature scanner, making sure you don't have a temperature, or you're not showing any signs or symptoms. Uh, I think we're going to see main people manually walking around the building, making sure that people are properly socially distanced and so on. When we look at an intelligent building, the significance and importance of designing an intelligent building from the get-go is certainly the savings we talked about, but it's also turning that building into an operating system so that we can deploy very quickly and much more economically new applications to support the changes in the world. And in this case, we can very simply in an intelligent building have things like social distancing apps where electronically we can tell you that you're, you've spent too much time too close to uh, other people in the building. You need to create more space or digitally assigning desks, hot testing or hoteling. We've called that. We've talked about that in the past as well. Um, not only that, being able to understand where people have gone in a building so that if someone does come down with COVID, we can tell who they've come in contact with, right. let those people know so that they can self-quarantine for 14 days, and hopefully we minimize the impact of that exposure very quickly in an organization. Yeah, no, yeah, all valid points. And uh, to talk about the, uh, the first part where you said the, the legacy buildings where you have the temperature reading you know, at the front, um, I was reading an article um, that was, I, I can't remember what, where it came from, but it was uh, from Related Property, and they were talking about uh, deploying IR cameras all over their, um, you know, C-level uh, executive spaces because they can't uh, physically uh, swallow the fact of um, an employee, you know, ramming a uh, temperature gauge gun in the face of you know c-level executives at major financials and their tenants um so they're trying to deploy or test out i should say all the ir cameras that are out there um and, and see what is aesthetically pleasing because that's the other side of it the architects out there you know they they love uh, pleasing the client's expectations just like so many people do pleasing the client's expectations but they're looking at it from only aesthetics not the functionality of it. So the point that you make about, um, you know, there's the twofold part here, the manual integration of the, uh, you know, the first step and then the second step is gonna be all the video digital signage and whatnot that's gonna to have to be deployed. I know um, listening to uh, several other podcasts as well as uh, reading certain articles for the corporate real estate initiatives are 
you know, keep everybody out of the building as long as possible while we figure it out is what's going on right now. Um, you know, companies that are, you know, key players in the real estate market like CBRE or Christian Wakefield, they're, they're getting it done. They, they are, you know, touted very highly for, for good reason. Uh, they're taking the necessary precautions to ensure the safety and well-being of their folks that are tenants of their buildings or guests of those buildings. But still, they could use help from you <laughs> and, and folks like you that are deploying um, the layer one infrastructure to support the needs of the many. Um, yeah. Because of all these different platforms. So, Absolutely. And you people, especially people who are building buildings today, what we're going through now has to really resonate and has to be understood that yes, even the technology we're talking about can be implemented in a, a legacy type building. It's just going to cost a lot more to do it. And right. if we can build buildings more economically today, but create that platform so that as global circumstances change, this technology can be easily implemented. It's going to save a lot of money on the operational side. It's going to have a much healthier, more productive environment. If you can, try to walk me through product and the formula that you use. Uh, is it 2 million per 100,000 square feet? In yep. Savings? So how does that come, how does that, come to uh, that number from your product base? Yeah, absolutely. So that number in savings comes from a lot of different areas. It's not just the infrastructure. It starts with an, uh, an, an integration platform. So we're eliminating a lot of proprietary software in a building, giving us an open dynamic platform, which makes edge devices basically plug and play. Uh, then it goes towards uh, looking at major components of the building like uh, HVAC, like lighting, uh, security, and rather than using a traditional AC power model, using power over Ethernet. And all of these systems and devices are tied in with a common infrastructure based on structured cabling. We highly recommend a 6A FUTP infrastructure, not only so you can adequately deliver power and data and control today, but you're prepared for the next 20 years for both the power delivery side and whatever the, uh, the bandwidth requirements would be from those future edge devices. And in doing that, we save a lot of money on the infrastructure side going from AC to low voltage, and we save a lot of money on the software side by eliminating the proprietary software in the building. So you're talking about the full gamut of things that could be powered on a, on a low voltage cable, lighting, Absolutely. You know, uh, digital signage, uh, cameras, et cetera. Uh, Absolutely. And lighting's a huge component of that. It's the most dense application in the building. So that creates the bulk of that sensor network and allows us to have other devices and sensors. Again, it's kind of a plug and play model. So you'd mentioned the thermal sensors uh, in cameras. Uh, even an intelligent building of yesterday probably didn't have that. Today, all of a sudden we need that. And that can then be simply plugged in to an existing um, platform within the building based on the structured cabling infrastructure. Okay, good point. Um... So we, we spend a lot of time around the, the corporate office environment. Um, I would say there's a good portion, a good percentage of folks that are forced to work from home for the foreseeable future. I myself am working from remotely. Um, many of my employees are, are working remote and I, I anticipate that's gonna be the new norm to some degree and have uh, shifts uh, where people come back in uh, to the new norm, but in the meantime, you know we don't want to degrade any of the any of the things or you know delay uh, any of the response time. So for the home office environment, what are certain things that the Siemens company would recommend? You and the Siemens company would recommend sure. for your home office environment? Yeah, and you know virtual meetings are mission critical at this point. That's really our only way of communicating. And if there's one recommendation more than anything else I can give to uh, someone who's working from home, especially someone who's on a lot of virtual meetings, is cable to their office space, directly out of their modem, whether it be a cable modem or a Fios modem or whatever they have, uh, simply because Wi-Fi is great. It's incredibly convenient, but you're sharing bandwidth in that case. And uh, I know we were having some offline conversation before. In my house, there's two TVs streaming wirelessly while the kids are on their uh, iPads and, and phones streaming on the side. So it doesn't surprise everything. Else. Right. It doesn't surprise me if we have four to six devices that are actively streaming video 
through the wireless router that I then want to have my mission critical uh, business meeting through. So when we cable direct from that, uh, from that router into the office space and directly to your PC or your laptop using, again, a 6A solution, so you're really taking advantage of the capacity of that broadband network, you're going to have the best solution possible to, uh, to have these meetings. Yeah. It's, um, it's, it's funny because I had a, a many different manufacturers on and they kind of be, it's a, a constant message of kind of streamline the same type of things that you've been saying on, on the intelligent platform, 6A and, and so forth. Um, one of the things that my company has, has done over the years with the same company is uh, we helped in the data center with uh, the QSF piece. Uh, that the senior company manufactures and we've seen an uptick and in, in certain uh, companies primarily the financials because of the amount of um, you know people that are dialing in and remote and the switch gears being constantly upgraded or you know uh, uh, expanded upon I should say so we, we've seen you know that business you know Cisco's having a, a field day I'm sure of it right now uh, they're happy you know, your local pizzeria might be suffering due to COVID, but I know Cisco is, uh, it, it's raining cash there. So we've been fortunate though, um, you know, with the help of your, your company manufacturing QSFPs uh, to support Switchgear. Uh, it's been, you know, very uh, readily available and, and commonly used. Uh, so I thank you for that. Um, yeah, I, you know, it, if you don't mind me touching on that really quickly, I think one of our uh, ability to support our customers and our partners in this type of uh, global crisis is that a lot of our manufacturing is based here in North America. Right. So we're able to pull together the resources very quickly uh, to be able to adjust to the, the spikes and the dips in uh, any type of market, whether it's the, uh, the QSFPs or uh, any of the other components that we have. Yeah, no, I, I have to say, you guys have been uh, on point uh, through um, an uncertain, uncertain times with the copper solutions and, and offering. So we we commend that. And uh, I know, uh, again, we would love to, to get together and and be educating and, and uh, teaming up on opportunity. But this is why we're we're asking people to wise up and listen to uh, our podcast. Um, from all of us at Wise Components, we're, we're here to support your needs from the infrastructure, whether it be uh, material or tools, uh, in optical fiber or copper solutions. Wise Components have been around since 1975. I know not as quite as long as the Siemens company, but we've been uh, partnered with the Siemens company since 1975. So we've had a, a very good uh, track record. And, uh, Absolutely. You know, we've taken down some quite substantial size projects over the years uh, because of the quality uh, product as well as the quality service uh, that Wise Components brings to the table. So I, I greatly appreciate for uh, you taking the time to get yet again to promote uh, your company and what it is that you guys are doing and what you're seeing. Let me ask you uh, this last thing. So from an industry trend, everything prior to January 2020, got thrown out the window as far as I'm concerned. So now, as we scramble, and I say from the TIA, IEEE, standards, Bixi, you know, even Bixi, speaking of, uh, they went to a, a hybrid virtual platform for their upcoming uh, fall conference. So it was to be held at uh, Las Vegas, Nevada uh, in September. And now it's still going to be there for those who want to attend physically. Um, but you now have the option to see the speakers and presenters and do uh, booth, booth screening to see uh, what's out on the floor, who's out there. So that it, it's, again, now the very thing that we're, we're promoting is helping you bring it to face value because you could not have this hybrid conference. You could not tour the floor without a strong 
network to support the, the content and the feedback. Absolutely. I mean, there's a lot of great companies out there that make cameras. There's a lot of great companies out there that make TV screens and cell phones. And there, there's a commercial every 30 seconds for them. And I, and, and I love them, I mean, whether it be LG, Samsung, Apple, they're all out there. But their paperweights without a quality foundation, network layer one infrastructure is so vital to the mix to make these things work. See yeah. That. And then, you talk about these crazy applications, Anthony, and uh, you know we, we touched on the field terminated plug a, a couple of minutes ago, but that is one of the uh, best solutions I think that the industry has seen when it comes to how we have to be quick to design these networks. And oftentimes, uh, you think of a trade show space now, we don't always know where booths are going to be or the demands on these booths, how many connections they need. So the ability to just drop a coil or cable and cut it to length so it's not a trip and fall hazard or it gets behind certain poles. I mean, that's kind of priceless on the labor side for fast, uh, fast economical and incredibly uh, high power infrastructures. Right. Well, hopefully um, this too shall pass as the, the uh, old proverb is said. Um, you know, I, I think that it is definitely going to continue this new norm, this hybrid, uh, if you will, remote access and as well as uh, office space. I, I hope to uh, have the opportunity to uh, shake your hand in, in the future. I know that's, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, if we do it right, we can kind of high five on the, uh... <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the new world, isn't it? <laughs> um, you know, it, it's funny, like, where, you know, to, to us, this is like, oh, my God, this is, this is crazy. But to a child that doesn't know anything, this is normal to them because they've yeah, already the new normal. Actually, whether it be PlayStation or Xbox, virtually, hey, I'm going to go play with my friend and he's in another state or another country on my Xbox or my PlayStation, you know. So, uh, again, going back to the basis of what we're, we're, we are talking about and trying to educate and entertain the folks that are listening to Wise Up is that layer one infrastructure means something. Quality designs, quality products, and quality installs. I would say listen to Wise Up. Check out your friends at the Seaman Company for some quality products. Listen to some of the other quality podcasts that are out there. I know our friends over at Low Voltage Nation, um, Blake, I, if you're listening, I know you are. Uh, he's highlighting the LVN gold, gold standard of quality install. So what we've been doing on Wise Up is we've been talking to manufacturers and consultants and folks that are deploying quality products or manufacturing quality products and us at Wise Components, we're bringing those quality products, defect-free, on-time deliveries at a fair price. Uh, Blake's been talking to many of the contractors that buy from us, as well as outside of our geography, talking about quality installs. I know, Bob, you've been in enough um, you know, closets, data closets, telephone rooms, and data centers to see the difference and know the difference between a quality install and a non-quality install. So I urge you to check out LVN Gold Standard out there. Um, I'm Anthony Romeo, Wise Components. This is our podcast, Wise Up. And we've been listening to Bob Allen from the Seaman Company. Bob, greatly appreciate your time again. And uh, thank you for everything you do. I look forward thank you, to Anthony. meeting up in the near future. So Absolutely. I appreciate you having me on. It was a lot of fun. Check out Wise Up. Wise up, wise up.